Pikachu. Yeah. What if Hong Game Freak made Pokemon instead of making this the Pikachu? They made this the Pikachu. Yeah, whatever. And instead of making it in 1993, they made it in 1393. We're going to find the answer to that question today. When it comes to Pikachus, there are basically two schools of thought. There's the garbage Pikachu, and then there's the old, uh, the OG, the fat Pikachu. That's the one we're basing our design on, which is why we're starting with making a potato. We give our clay potato some armature wire legs, which we cover in clay to get a base to start sculpting from. Back from the oven, we can start bulking out the thighs of our knight. We make this thick and muscular, uh, basically identical to the old school Pikachu. We're giving our knight a codpiece, a nice pair of running shoes, and start the construction of his tunic. This also helps with bulking out his gut. In addition to that, he gets a belt, which will later on be part of Pikachu's iconic lightning-shaped tail. I made these diagonal cuts with the sculpting knife to get some nice folds and wrinkles in the belt. We give him a singular additional belly roll, and also add some fat on the back, in which we can sculpt the opening for the tunic. Oh, and would you look at that beautiful cinematography, truly astonishing work by the cameraman here. These straps doubles as the pattern on Pikachu's back. Although halfway through I decided I need to do some extra weathering on the tunic. And here we go again, a beautifully framed shot by the cameraman. I finished up the straps and added the rest of the belt. But now it's time for... From some properly flattened clay, I cut out the lightning bolt design of the sword. I tried to attach it to the crossguard handle and pommel, but this is my first time using Super Sculpey, and it's much harder to get a nice solid connection than it is with Fimo. In the end I had to go back and reinforce it with wire and super glue. For the shield I simply made a slightly concave circle and carved my design into it, including some wood grain in the back. To exaggerate the curve and also get a convex inside, I pushed it down over a lump of aluminium foil. For the arms I attached some pieces of armature, and then I cut open a piece of clay the exact way your parents told you not to cut stuff. With this clay hot dog bun I could simply wrap it around the armature, and sculpt it closed on the inside. To attach the shield I went through a couple of different ideas. First I sculpted the gauntlet on its own, and tried to blend it onto the shield. This didn't work. Then I tried to sculpt the shield and the gauntlet directly on the arm, uh, this didn't work either. Then I made the obvious thing and sculpted the gauntlet directly on the shield and it will be easy to just glue this onto the arm later. Same for the sword handle. I think we can all agree Pick and Knight uses these silly mitten gauntlets instead of the cool fingered ones. For the helmet I started with this pointed lump and then I attached the cheeks, the funny looking snout and the eye slits one by one. I love adding these ventilation holes. They are so simple, but they add so much. For the sleeves, I have my own secret clay technique, which I call Wurmple Dealies. I didn't have to use any of those for the edge of the visor. I could simply press down into the clay and get a nice looking edge. As of now, our Pekanite is a bit hard of hearing. It's about time we do something about that. There we go, two nice looking mouse ears riveted in place. The sculpting is finished. Now, I have read somewhere that you can use acetone to remove tool marks even after you cure the clay. This didn't work very well for me now. After some research, I think I should have just worked it a bit harder with the acetone. Now I use sandpaper instead, which works great. I also glue back any pieces that needed gluing. And then, we can move on to priming. Who's that Pokemon? It's Pikachu! <laughs> I primed him white to make it easier to get a good coverage with yellow, and I also made a base from a peanut butter jar lid. With these brushes I ruined earlier, we can just snap up some nice colors and get painting.
And now the painting is pretty much finished, but I realized this base just looked like a peanut butter yarlid, so instead I made this one from foam core and plywood. With our figure mounted on the base, I think it's time we get a look at some beauty shots. Thank you very much for watching, and an additional thank you to my 81 subscribers and everyone that leaves a comment. I was thrilled with the response to my latest video, and you can be sure that I'm going to return to the setting of the Heroes of the Ravaged Gardens, my world-building fantasy project, soon. Anyway, bye!